Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated Java tests using WebDriver. Today we're going to have a look at randomizing data. We'll talk about what randomizing data is and why you would need to use randomized data and how to use randomized data. So really quickly, what is randomized data? Well, to explain this, let's use an example. Let's navigate to our Java test site first and look at the contact form for instance. So when we pass in data, currently what we've been doing so far is just passing in kind of static data in each of these fields. For example, in the enter name field, we passed in something like name test for address, we passed in something like address test and so on. Randomizing data is the concept of passing in data into this field which are random. All you do is basically write some method or do some kind of mechanics to pass in data into this field where the data is random. Now this brings us to the question why you would want to do this. Why would you want to pass in random data? Well, think about it for a moment. If we passed in the same data in our test, or rather if our test always passed in, say, the same data every single time and it worked, the one thing your test tells you is your test works with that data. But the one thing your test doesn't tell you is what happens if the data changes. So what happens if the physical data changes? For instance, let's just say there's some validation going into this name field which only accepts, let's just say, letters and numbers, no special characters. What if the data you pass in is always just letters and numbers also, i.e., for instance, let's just say, for example, we pass in something like name 01. That would always pass because the validation for that field is only accepting name and number. What if tomorrow, let's just say, the validation for this field changes and someone wants to pass in only letters, no numbers? Your test will start failing. More so, what if the validation now is extended to accept other kind of parameters as well, like special characters? Because your test is only passing in names and numbers, you will never ever validate that through your test. So the solution to try and add versatility to your test, but at the same time maintain the integrity of your test, is to use this concept of randomizing data, i.e. you pass in the data, you don't define what the data is, the data is always random. Another way to put it is, if you run the same test twice, the likelihood of the same data being used in the same test is very low, therefore giving your test a little bit more dynamics in trying to test some scenario using different types of data. So if we go to our Eclipse uh, IDE, I've already written a test which at the moment uses hard-coded values. So let's run this really quickly just to make sure this works. Okay, looks like it worked without any issues. Now, like I described, let's say we want this name field value that is passed into the name field to be different every time we do it. We need to use this concept of randomizing the data. So how can we randomize the data? How can we make it so that when this data inside the send keys method is used to populate this name field, how can we do it randomly? Well, to do this, we can use a couple of clever tricks that Java provides us with to randomize data. So what we're going to do is go ahead and write four different ways of randomizing data, four different types of data that we can randomize. Although the scope of randomized data is far larger than that, but these four methods should give you a much clearer idea of the type of data we can randomize. So the first thing I will do is write a method that actually randomizes a string, i.e. I'm going to write a method, or, or rather I'd like to write a method that I call, call random string, passing some value which defines the length of the string, and what it will do is return a string which has random data in it. So the way I'm going to do it is make it public, and I'm going to make it static, and I want a string, and I'm going to call it random string, and I want to pass in a length. So the reason why I've making this method static is so that if I move this method out to say like some kind of utility class or commons class I can use this anywhere without having to make an instance of the class it belongs to. So the first thing I want to do is define uh, the kind of random data I want to use. So let's just say uh, data and this is simply gonna be uh, the values I want to be using in my 
data string that's returned. So I'm just going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to define all the numbers and the letters as well. There you go. It really doesn't matter as long as uh, uh, there are some characters here. Okay. So now what I will do is use the random class that Java, that Java provides us with and call this random. And this is going to be equal to a new random. Uh, and what I will do now is use the string builder class. And let's just call this SP. It's going to be a uh, a new string uh, builder and here I'm going to pass in the length so what this is going to do is simply going to build a new string with a defined length now what I would like to do is basically get the characters here pick them at random and add them to the string builder so if I just say int i is equal to zero. Um, if i is less than length, uh, then i plus plus. And what I'm going to do is here is now say sp append, and I will attend uh, rather append uh, data dot character at. So now I'm basically saying which character I want. And now I'm going to use the random number to basically get any random character from it and then in here I am simply gonna pass in or rather state which one I want so in this case just length okay and the final thing I want to do is actually return my string builder and I'm just gonna make sure it's a string okay and that. Okay, so now what this will do is I've defined a string which has at the moment various different types of values. I'm defining a random value, I'm then defining a string builder to have a length. In this case, it's the length I'm going to pass in. I'm then using this for loop to effectively pick at random a value from this string data and append it to this sp value here. And it's going to do it for however many times the length is defined as and then return that string effectively giving me a random string every time i call this method let's look at another method this time what i want to do is i'm going to basically extend this to return a random email address so same thing public static uh, string random email and this is essentially going to be a repetition of a lot of this so the first thing I want to do is let's just say I want to define a string and I'm call this name and let's just do that just to speed things up a bit so this is going to be the name of the email and then I'm going to have uh, a first domain and I'm going to have a second domain so these parts of the email are basically going to be the parts of an email. So the name is going to be the name of the email, and the first name is going to be the server name of the email, and the second do uh, domain is going to be the dot part of the email. So I suppose I can remove these numbers because traditionally they're not usually part of a dot com or dot org or dot net address and so on. Okay, so now what I want to do is again now define another random. and now what I want to do is define an email okay now I'm gonna jump into this string builder uh, again so again I'm just gonna copy that just to speed things up a bit and this time I need a length but I am gonna hard code the length in for the moment if you want, I suppose you can always define the length. I'm just going to set that to 5. Okay, and what I want to do is, because this time I'm trying to randomize each one, I'm going to do it like this. So, so this is now going to return a random name. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call email or I'm going to use this variable here to basically append the value of the email so in this case SP so the value of email will now be equal to whatever the value of string builder is at that point in time what I now need to do is basically repeat the process another two more times to get the value of these so if I just do that and this time instead of calling name I'll call first domain here and in the second one I'm going to call the second domain and this time instead of just appending the value of SP I'm also going to add in the at sign here Oops. and here I'm just going to add in the dot so now what will happen is we'll basically end up with a name which is then gonna add in the at and a random first domain which is then going to be appended with a dot and a random domain name and then we're just going to return the email there you go let's have a look at a third method we've talked about returning strings what about returning a random number well we can do that also it's quite simple it's a uh, public static yeah. I'm going to make it static uh, int and I'm going to call this return number and in here I'm going to define the length or, or rather the maximum value I want so I'm just going to say int uh, max value so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to define a max value and basically the way this method is going to work is I'm going to provide a max value and the random number that's going to be returned will be between 0 and whatever the max value is so again same thing random random is equal to new random uh, and this time I'm just gonna say return random dot uh, next int max value this is now basically gonna return a random value where the max value will be whatever we pass it also to give data uniqueness uh, we've defined string and we define numbers sometimes you want to be able to define unique data uh, with some kind of identifier that will always be unique it doesn't need to consider anything about randomness this thing is always unique no matter what and one of the few things in life that is always unique is the current date and time so if you were to think about this the time we have right now in two seconds time will never occur again so let's just assume it's I don't know five o'clock right now now is 501 now is 502 and so on so time in itself is unique a time can never be repeated so one thing we can do is have time generated as part of our random data to give it more randomness so again I'm going to just do a public static uh, and I'm going to return a string and this time I'm going to say uh, I don't know, timestamp I suppose and I don't want to pass anything into this method and all I want to do is define a new date and this is going to be equal to new date and what I want to do is return a new timestamp and I'm just going to say date dot get time uh, to string because I'm trying to return a string and let's just import in these libraries Uh, what's the problem here? Ah, you know what? I'm just gonna just import in the whole thing. Ah, uh, I think it's security is the one I want. Sorry, it's SQL the one I want. Uh, I might have imported the wrong thing. Let me just have a quick look. Yep, it's util I wanted. There we go. Uh, right, so this will now give me the current time uh, of the day. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just minimize this so we can see the whole thing in a little bit more clearer fashion. Okay, so I've got a random string generator, a random email generator, a random number generator, and a current timestamp generator. So what I'm going to do is remove these values and actually use that random generator. So 
the email for the email field makes a good candidate for the random email so let's use that right here and do that okay uh, the name field makes a good candidate for the random string and I want a maximum value of 10 or rather I want a random string w where there are 10 characters uh, the address field makes a good candidate for the timestamp I suppose it's not necessarily true but uh, why not and for the postcode we'll just go ahead with the random number and I want uh, the absolute maximum random value to be uh, 150 uh, oops okay so this is expecting a string so we can do two things we can either get this to return a string or we can pass it as a string so let's just pass it as a string for the moment okay so now let's run this and we'll run the same test twice we should expect to see the data that's being populated in the contact form to be random both times in fact let's let's take this out and let's run it two times again okay so let's go back and run this again Okay, so now let's quickly compare the two forms. So as you can see, the data that's being used in both forms, both which are run by the test, are unique. Uh, both values, or rather all values, are different. So we can use this randomized method to pass in different data into our field, which are unique in the sense that if you were to say, treat all of this as the same payload, they are both unique sets of data and using random data in our test gives our test a lot more versatility and allows them to effectively try and catch out more defects in the issue. You also, when using randomized data in the same test, are effectively running the same test using different data, therefore running unique sets of information almost every time you run your test. And that's it for this video folks, thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google, links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.